Good afternoon. We have a few updates to share regarding the response to COVID-19 here in Duval County. We appreciate our new partners working with us to bring you information safely by practicing social distancing in a timely manner. With me today are Director Bruno from JSO and Director Steve Woodard from our Emergency Operations Center. I'll start with some brief updates and remarks and then we'll open for questions from the media. I want to start by saying I realized what's happened so far as it relates to COVID-19 it has been catastrophic to businesses and workers who are now facing incredible hardship. This is impacting all of us, but not everyone is experiencing the economic devastation. So I'd like to take a moment and address that. For those that are not feeling the financial stress of this virus and for those who are not feeling the effects, you need to recognize those who are. We all need to be doing our part and doing what's right. The sooner we flatten the curve, the sooner we'll alleviate this economic crisis. The more people who don't take this seriously by practicing social distancing and no longer, the longer this will go on and the more people it's going to impact. We all play a role in stopping COVID-19 and we all need to do our part. Testing at Lot J will begin tomorrow, Saturday at 9 a.m. It will be open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. seven days a week for as long as supplies are available. The testing facility does not require a doctor order or a scheduled appointment. However, clients will be evaluated by a medical professional on site if they meet the criteria. They will be tested. If they meet the criteria, they will be tested. If they do not, they will be sent home. Testing, in this is a federally sponsored site, so in accordance with their guidelines, testing will be performed for anyone 65 years or older with an on-site temperature of 99.6 degrees or higher and with respiratory symptoms. We hope we can work with our federal partners in the days ahead and it's at some point expand that, but right now, 65 years or older with an on-site temperature 99 degrees of higher and respiratory symptoms. Additionally, first responders and healthcare workers who have direct contact with patients will be tested regardless of presence of symptoms. This is guidance we're getting from the federal government right now, but we are anticipating to open this up to more people in the future. Test results will be provided in three to seven days. We anticipate long lines as I ask everyone to be patient. We are trying to test as many people as we can. You may be in line a while and public restrooms are not available. A maximum of four people are allowed per vehicle. Passengers that want to be tested must be sitting by an operating window. Any additional passenger over the limit of four will have to get back in line or will be asked to return the following day. For Lot J testing, you will need a form of photo ID and an insurance card, if you have it. You do not need to be insured. If you're a healthcare worker or first responder, please bring your work identification. Bring your own pen and stay in your vehicle. Do not take any fever-reducing medication four to six hours prior to testing. American Sign Language and Spanish Sign Language, interp language interpreters will be available on site. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office will discuss traffic information for Lot J testing in a few minutes. Again, the location opens at 9 a.m. But do not arrive before 8 a.m. If you're coming from the west side of town, use Bay Street. If coming from the east, use Gator Bull, Gator Bull Boulevard. Be sure to follow the instructions of JSO traffic officers who will be forming a line. But also keep in mind that for everyone's safety, all testing sites will only be operational during safe weather. Today at 11 a.m., the COVID-19 testing location at the Prime Osborne began operations. This is a partnership between the City of Jacksonville, Baptist Health, and Telescope Health. Hours will be from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. You must be a Duval County resident and you must get an appointment through Telescope Health website or mobile app after a virtual evaluation. Those who are tested will be reimbursed, $25, reimbursed the $25 fee at a later date. I've been asked why the $25 fee. In partnership with Baptist and the company doing the virtual uh, assessment and testing, if there wasn't a fee that would be reimbursed, people that aren't symptomatic, people that just want to be tested because they want to be tested, would go to the app and start getting an assessment. We need to have some way to organize this and manage the load to make sure the right people are getting the assessment and the right people get tested. Some important news regarding our beaches, effective at 5 p.m. today, all Duval County beaches are closed. I've spoken with all three mayors. We all collaborated on this. 
uh, and made this decision. I understand we have beautiful weather, but this is for everyone's safety. We must control this virus. We must stop the spread. We must practice social distancing. For example, even when the beaches don't look crowded and the tides are low, uh, when the tides come in, the mayors of those beaches tell me you, you can't help but not being able to social distance. It's like ants on a hill when the tides come in. If you're on the beaches after 5 p.m. today, it will be considered trespassing. Police and lifeguards will be patrolling the beaches to make sure citizens are in compliance. There will be signage notifying citizens of the closures at beach walkovers and access points. In addition, some access points will be blocked off with barricades. Yesterday, I voiced my strong support for Senator Rick Scott's proposal to expand unemployment insurance and impose a moratorium on mortgage payments, rent, and utility bills. Today, I sent a letter to all U.S. Senators voicing that support. This will be a tremendous help to thousands of Jacksonville citizens and families during this crisis. My team and I have heard from business owners who are worried about the future of their businesses and the impact of their employees. As a former business owner, I completely understand those concerns and I share them. My team and I will continue to work with state and federal partners to get help those businesses that are affected by this crisis. That being said, there are some programs available. At the state level, the governor has activated the Small Business Bridge Loan Program that provides short-term interest-free working capital loans to help businesses. Interested businesses can learn more and apply at floridadisasterloan.org, floridadisasterloan.org. And at the federal level, the Small Business Administration is providing low-interest disaster loans through their Economic Injury Disaster Program. More information can be found about that program at disasterloan.sba.gov, disasterloan.sba.gov. As I said yesterday, I'm thankful for those businesses and organizations who are following the orders from Governor DeSantis and my office. There have been some questions about how we're enforcing these rules. To put it simply, we are. Those license holders that are not adhering to the capacity rules or closure orders will be held accountable. Our local authorities are working collaboratively with the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation to enforce these rules. We know these measures are very painful and will be awful to the bottom line of businesses, residents, and families. We made these difficult decisions to save lives. According to the official health experts' guidelines, these rules will protect people and flatten the curve, reducing the spread of this virus. These decisions will save lives. My team and I are also hearing from folks at salons, spas, and large office environments who are concerned for their health and safety. I encourage companies, large and small, to allow your employees to work remotely whenever possible. If that's not possible, take whatever actions you can to protect their health and safety. Reduce person-to-person -person interactions, have sick employees stay home, increase the frequency, enhance environmental cleaning, and encourage frequent hand washing and other personal mitigation issues for all employees. Social distance. Yesterday, I voiced my support for Senator Scott's call for more term on mortgage payments, rent, and utility bills. Since then, Chief Judge Mark Mahan issued an administrative offer that halts foreclosure sales and enforcements of possession writs of eviction in Duval County until April 3rd. There will be no enforcement of issued eviction orders during this time. Effective Monday, JEA will be closing its customer business office on Church Street until further notice. This is a precautionary measure to protect customers and employees. Customers can continue to use JEA.com or call 665-6000 for assistance. So again, COVID-19 testing location at Lot J will open tomorrow at 9 a.m. Do not arrive prior to 8 a.m. and ensure you meet the criteria for testing. Moving forward with these news conferences, we'll be moving to a video conferencing platform as we encourage everyone to social distance. I know this is unusual and unprecedented. Unusual times call for unusual measures. We want to make sure we're keeping everyone safe and following the guidelines. My team will be in contact with each media outlet with the details soon. Now I'd like to introduce Director Bruno with JSO to talk about traffic and other operations for the Lot J testing. Thank you. As Mayor Curry said, we're asking the public not to arrive before 8 a.m. We're also asking if they come from the west side of town to use Bay Street, or if they're coming from the east side of the uh, stadium to use Gator Bowl Boulevard. Please follow the directions of the JSO officers that are staged uh, along the route, as well as the sign boards that we will have displayed uh, for the public with information that will be vital to uh, getting them in and out of the queue as fast as possible. It's important that the public stays in their vehicle, 
They do not walk up. There's no walk up testing. It's not permitted. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, there's no facilities on the site uh, for public use. Uh, that creates a uh, contamination issue or concern for every time that uh, anyone exits their vehicle. So we ask that they stay in their vehicle and please cooperate with the personnel that are on the site. Um, that's all we have at this time. Director, did you have anything to add? Uh, yes, Mayor. Just to uh, inform the media and, and the public, as a city, we have been working on this incident since January 31st. So this is day 50 for us, and we have been working with all of our partners throughout the entire incident as it has evolved. We have a very comprehensive plan that we're following uh, with all of our stakeholders. Every day, we're getting updates from the Centers for Disease Control, from the World Health Organization, and from the Florida Department of Health, and we will continue to provide you with the most up-to-date information as we receive it. With that, we'll take questions. Mayor, I guess for Lot J testing, people that don't have cars, people that are just on bikes, can they be tested somewhere? The Lot J traffic, well, they have to come in a car, don't they? They have to be in a vehicle to uh, provide the protection for the employees that are there. That's the way it's set up and designed um, through the federal government piece. Um, there's all, there's other places to, uh, through their health care provider or other screening uh, that can be provided to them, but as far as the Lot J goes, we need everyone in a vehicle. But this is, I'm talking, you know, our homeless population and others that are very vulnerable. And I think that's been the concern, the calls that we've been getting. We have, uh, so members of my administration that work with our partners that, 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 that provide services to homeless people on any given day, they are in regular contact and communication. So should there be a, a person in the homeless community that needs to be assessed and tested, that would be coordinated uh, through someone in my office and those providers. Can you give us the latest update on where we stand in Duval County with cases? We've had the, the, uh, that nursing facility that I know had five. Where do we stand and do we know how this is spreading here? Jim, I, I, don't, I don't know the latest numbers just because there's active testing happening right now. People are getting, gonna be getting results uh, before we've heard about it. Uh, what I have said is that, uh, what I have said is that we can expect these numbers to climb as the tests expand. Uh, and the most important thing that we do as they climb is, again, make sure that those that are most vulnerable based on age and immune systems and respiratory backgrounds get the treatment they need. Director, you may have more information on that. The information that is posted currently on the Department of Health website indicates that Duval County has uh, 15 cases. Uh, 13 of those are residents of Duval County. Uh, two are non-residents of Duval County. The demographics, uh, 12 uh, men, three women, uh, two travel-related cases, eight not travel-related cases, and five unknown travel-related cases. Uh, as you know, in the last 24 hours, a uh, uh, medical examiner for Duval County has reported one death. And I know that's a concern from that nursing facility uh, where that occurred. Are you worried that we're going to see something similar like we've seen out west, like in the Seattle area, with these types of facilities? You know, every case is obviously a, a case of significance, and we're continuing to monitor that. Uh, if you look at the demographics, uh, the nursing homes and other facilities are uh, more susceptible, it would appear, to this type of illness. So we're working closely with them and the Department of Health to make sure they have no unmet needs. And we're working very closely with the hospitals. Uh, been on numerous calls with their leadership, both collectively as a group, and I'm calling and texting them nightly and throughout the day. And uh, you know they are they are prepared and continue to prepare. Uh, Jacksonville is unique in that we're la geographically large. We're not as dense as many other cities. Uh, and if we take the necessary precautions, which we've we've been taking now on about social distancing, uh, we can flatten the curve. And I guess just finally on that, we saw at the methadone clinics today here in the city, many 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 people there and not practicing that. Even JSO, we understand, went out there. Do you know, have any information on that? Is there, have you learned anything? Director, do you want to? So I, I saw the picture that you were referencing in regards to the uh, people assembled outside of that. We're, we're still looking at that. I don't know uh, what the response was. I haven't gotten that information back, but we're going to look at our response and, and uh, see what opportunities are there. Obviously, uh, part of this goes back to, and the mayor had talked about it before, a lot of this is incumbent to the public to do the right thing and do what's right. I mean, obviously we can send an officer out there to that situation, but um, 
we, we need to dig a little deeper, see why the business is allowing that to occur and, and what opportunities for that business to, or any other business for that matter of fact, to, um, to limit the crowd that's outside of there or, or take uh, preventative measures. Yeah, that should not be happening. Mayor, have there been business closures or citations uh, in regards to noncompliance at this point? Um, and then also to second question, uh, what's the status on possible city or municipal dollars going in to help some of these local and small businesses? So we have, um, we have had folks out, uh, fire, inspe uh, fire inspectors and other compliance, and yes, we're making businesses comply with the limitations put in by the city and by the governor. Uh, We've certainly discussions about how we can help small businesses, uh, but you know, and when you look at what would be the most impactful, so in the short term right now, while we're trying to flatten the curve and deal with the crisis, it'd be very difficult to be able to get the data of the specific businesses, get paperwork filled out, and get dollars to them. This is why when I saw Senator Scott's proposal and I've talked to him about it a number of times, talk about an immediate impact on small business owners and on employees to have a moratorium on mortgage payments, rent, and evictions. Uh, if we can get uh, the federal government to act quickly on something like that, that would be immediate relief to our people and business owners. Regarding the specific uh, testing that will be done, uh, we had some concerns that one woman only got an oral swab as opposed to a nasal swab. So could you speak specifically, would both of those be done or is it depending on each person's specific symptoms and conditions? Yeah, the, the, the health pair, those are healthcare experts, you know, we're in partnership with Baptist. So the, they're the, the pros on determining uh, what type, type of test to administer. So whatever they deem the right test, that's the test they're gonna give. You mentioned only a ball, you only know a ballpark number of tests. Do you want the Department of Health to give you guys more information so you can make more corrective actions if need be? Well, here's what we know at this point. Um, by the way, we we are in communications with the State Emergency Operations Center on, on a regular basis. In fact, they're helping with the federal site as well. Uh, we're past the point where you know weeks ago, uh, uncertainty: is it here? How many cases are here? We know it's here. We know the more people that are tested, we're going to see it. Uh, we know mortality rates affect certain populations more than others. Uh, and so we've just got to social distance. If we have symptoms, uh, any kind of sickness, we ought to just be staying home. We ought to be staying away from people regardless. I mean, that's where we are right now. That is, that is the message. And Do you have enough test kits? Uh, Jim, we have, we're ramping up testing. We began ramping this up. We began, the reason you have two testing sites landing here this way is because when we were evaluating responses that worked, uh, top of the list responses were mobile testing sites. And so, uh, you know, there, we've got two that'll be up and operational by tomorrow. And uh, we're gonna test the people that need to be tested and going to continue to, the, the best thing we can do is flatten the curve. In fact, I was watching the press conference from the administration in D.C., the Trump administration, and the doctor was talking about testing is important, uh, it, but testing in and of itself is not the solution. The solution is social distancing and stopping the spread. What's here is here at this point. What's important today is that we take the actions that we've been taking and we need to continue to take to stop the spread. Will you consider uh, free testing at all? Lot J's free testing. Uh, Mayor, we have a report over at the prom, near the Prom Osborne Center, and they have at least uh, 139 test kits left. Uh, so when we run out, what's next? They're going to continue to work the supply chain to get more tests in. I mean, you know, it, look, we are facing uh, not just statewide, worldwide demand right now. And we have those testing sites because we got ahead of it here a couple weeks ago to get them here and get them operational. And so I can tell you that, uh, that people are working to make sure that the supply chain continues to come in. And, Last people, question. and people are really complaining about the telescope app because it keeps crashing and we've got a lot of calls to the newsroom. So what can you tell so us? I'm, I'm, to I'm told that the, the telephone version of the app has moved slow. Uh, and that, and, and Baptist tells us that this is a national server problem, not just on this app, but there's so much server traffic at this point in time. Um, so yeah, the, the web-based app has not slowed, the phone app has slowed, 
they're working with the, the national providers and working with their servers to make sure that, that it, it, it operates at a, a reasonable speed. Can Karen, do we know about the beaches somewhat? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're closing the beaches. I mean, people can't even walk on the beach. I think a lot of people are going to be concerned, particularly since we're coming to the weekend. I understand the concern, Jim. I, I, the weather is going to be beautiful. Uh, people are going to want to be out there soaking up the sun. Uh, I talked to the Three Beaches mayors. We've been told, we talked about this last night, till late yesterday, again this morning. And, and, and in the end, uh, when people congregate on the beaches, even when they try to social distance, when the tides come in, uh, it's a virtually impossible. And you, once that starts to happen, you can't manage it. So we've made this decision in the best interest of the people of this city. And we know people aren't, understand people aren't going to like it. Uh, but we've got to operate with speed when we have data that tells us this is what we should do and make decisions that are going to uh, keep people safe. How long will it be closed? It's indefinite at this point.